Hello and welcome to our school at home class in English grade 10. We are in the fourth quarter of our set of lessons and I hope everybody will delight in learning today with lesson number 17. Composing conclusion for research report of learning module you are expected to develop an understanding in writing conclusion for research identify the steps and tips in writing a good conclusion and compose a good conclusion for a start do the following exercise you can pause this video if you will need more time press play again when you're finished with activity and when you're ready to proceed with the lesson Tell whether if the given statement is true or false. Write your answer on a sheet of paper. Number 1. Powerful conclusions of your research papers must tie up all the arguments, facts, and circumstances you presented in your paper's body. Number 2. State your conclusions in a clear and simple language. Number 3. Include personal approach and subjectivity in writing a research paper conclusion. Number four, new ideas should be introduced in the conclusion. And number five, conclusions may also call for action or overview future possible research. Here are the answers. Number one, true. Number two, true. Number three, false. Number four, false. And number five, true. One. In our previous lesson, that analysis is a process used by researchers for reducing data to a story and interpreting it to derive insights. The analysis process helps in reducing a large chunk of data into smaller one. Learning how to make an analysis could help to identify and to produce the best results for the decisions to be made. When a writer or researcher gathers information during the process of comprehensive observation of their primary sources, books, scholarly articles, scientific reports, academic journals, etc., each topic should have its own summary in the end that will briefly conclude the ideas discussed in the paper. Conclusion is the final part of your research paper. It is the last paragraph which contains summary of the whole work and predictions for the future. The conclusion is intended to help the reader understand why your research should matter to them after they have finished reading the paper. A conclusion is not merely a summary of your points or a restatement of your research problem, but a synthesis of key points. The work itself is the collection of the findings from different studies. An effective conclusion can also add impact and strengthen your argument. It can also serve as a basis for continuing research, creating new ideas to resolve an issue you highlighted in your paper, or offering new approaches to a topic. So today, let us talk about composing conclusions for research report. Good conclusion. A well-written conclusion provides you with several important opportunities to demonstrate your overall understanding of your research problem to the reader. This include Letter A. Presenting the last word on the issues you raised in your paper. Just as the introduction gives a first impression to your reader, the conclusion offers a chance to leave a lasting impression. Do this, for example, by highlighting key points in your analysis or findings. This is finding, summarizing your thoughts and conveying the larger implications of your study. The conclusion is an opportunity to briefly answer the so what question by placing the study within the context of past research about the topic you've investigated. Let us see. Demonstrating the importance of your ideas. Don't be shy. The conclusion offers you a chance to elaborate on the significance of your findings. Letter D. Introducing possible new or expanded ways of thinking about your research problem. This does not refer to introducing new information, which should be avoided, 
but to offer new insight and creative approaches for framing, contextualizing the research problem based on the results of your study. Writing a good conclusion for your research paper. When writing your conclusion, you can consider the steps below to help you get started. Number one, restate your research topic. Typically, one sentence can be enough to restate your topic clearly. This part of your conclusion should be clear and concise and state only the most important information. Here is the example. The increase in water pollution since 2010 has contributed to decrease in aquatic wildlife as well as the increase in unsafe drinking water. Number 2. Restate the thesis. The thesis statement in your conclusion should be worded differently than what you wrote in your introduction. This element can also be effectively written in one sentence. Here is the example. Clean water is imperative to maintaining ecological balance and protecting the public's health. Number 3. Summarize the main points of your research. You can sum up the main points of your research paper. It's helpful to read and to pick out only the most relevant facts and arguments. The purpose of summarizing the key points is to remind the reader of the importance of the research topic. Here is an example to help illustrate how to do this. The increase in sugar farming, more and more pollutants are entering our freshwater supplies. This increase in pollution has contributed to massive decreases in marine life, fish die off, increased respiratory illness in neighborhood populations, and has contributed to the shortage of clean drinking in water. Number 4. Connect the significance or results of the main points. You can present the significance of these points or you might discuss how the impacts of your topic affect a specific outcome. It might present the results of studies or other findings that can help add emphasis to how you present the significance of your information. Here is an example. Ecologists and marine biologists are continuing to measure the water quality. The researchers are continuing to find ways to combat the pollution runoff from commercial farms. In the future, the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency hopes this research will lead to, to a decrease in the pollutant con concentration in our fresh water systems. Number 5. Conclude your thoughts. You might create a call to action or pose an idea that gets your readers thinking further about your argument. Here is an example. If you cannot combat the ill effects that commercial farming has on our clean water, our freshwater ecosystems and drinking water supplies will surely diminish. More research and innovation are needed to maintain our clean water while still supporting the agricultural needs of our power economy. Here are the five things to avoid in your conclusion. Some types of information should never pop up in a good research paper conclusion. Remember these common mistakes of students and exclude them from the closing part of the study. Number 1. New Ideas It is not a proper time to start discussing a new problem as a writer will have to provide an answer to it as well. Nobody starts a new topic in the end. Number 2. Clichés Do not break the standard set in work. These are expressions that either have a general meaning or have lost their meaning over time. These overused phrases do not provide a specific meaning or image for the conclusion. Number 3. Contradictions You should express the doubts by the time you prepare a conclusion. Avoid offering the opposing views and making the readers hesitate about your findings. Number 4. Evidence The supporting evidence like quotes is unnecessary in the conclusion. Everything already written in your paper is enough, but cite, reference the sources properly. Number 5. Questions Do not confuse a rhetorical question with an ordinary question. A question requires an answer is not appropriate for the conclusion. To test our mastery of the lesson, let's try to answer the exercise below. 
in this activity, you will tell whether if it is a good conclusion or bad conclusion. Ready? Let's start! Pollution can kill fish and people. Drinking water becomes unsanitary and unsafe with pollution. If we do not fix the state of our fresh water systems, our health can suffer. Researchers are still trying to help, but they have not resolved the issue of the water pollution. As citizens, it is our responsibility to help keep our waters clean and avoid polluting rivers, lakes, and oceans. Very good! The answer is bad conclusion because there is no clear statement of the topic. Additionally, it is difficult to tell whether the first sentence is even a thesis statement. Next! The data provided in this research proves that males are usually involved in more serious car accidents. This, however, doesn't prove that women are better drivers. Women are, in fact, less likely to break law and rules, while men are known to excel in skill and are usually more focused. Accordingly, men are more skillful for drivers, but more strategies should be implemented to make them follow the law. Good job! It is a good conclusion, where it shows both sides of men and women and it gives emphasis on the important points. How about the next conclusion? Despite all safety measures, more precautions should be imposed regarding online safety for Filipino teenagers and children. Parents, schools, and governments should work together to keep young people safe while they are enjoying the benefits of the internet. Great! The answer is good conclusion because it creates a call to action or pose an idea to keep people away from any problems of the internet. Let's have activity number one. Read and analyze each item. Write your ideas why the given conclusions are ineffective. Write your answers on a sheet of paper. Conclusion number one. That's my essay, and I'm not changing my mind. What do you think? Why is this conclusion ineffective? Conclusion number two. In conclusion, Prime Minister is the ideal job because you can change Japan, live in a big house, and you can meet the US President. You can make a lot of money too, which is great. Why is this conclusion ineffective? Conclusion number three. Good parenting includes spending time with your children being involved in their lives, and showing love and care. Even though I am only 15 years old, I have seen a lot of young parents make the mistake of not spending time with their kids and neglecting them during the years they are growing up. If parents choose to do this, it might lead their children to become socially disengaged and feel isolated within the home and society. Why is this conclusion ineffective? Number two, read and analyze each situation. Write the possible conclusion for each paragraph. Do not forget the things they have to consider in writing a good conclusion. Do this on a sheet of paper. Activity number three, watch or read any current social issue news from television, social media, newspapers, and news websites. Try to compose and write your conclusion based on the gathered information and supporting details or evidence. Do this activity on a sheet of paper. To wrap everything up that we have talked about in this lesson, List down the three things you learned from the lesson. Don't forget that your conclusion is the final chance to make a good impression. And once again, indicate why the topic is so important. 
Now, you have to write a short conclusion, at least 3 to 5 sentences, about the important things to value in making a conclusion. Before we end, let's have a post test to know if you really understand the lesson. Ready? Here is the instruction. Choose the appropriate answer on each question. Write the letter of your answer on a sheet of paper. Number 1. It should express the doubts for the time you prepare a conclusion and avoid offering the opposing views and making the readers hesitate about your findings. Letter A. Clichés. Letter B. Contradictions. Letter C. Conclusion. Or letter D. Questions. Number 2. It should be worded differently than what you wrote in your introduction. Letter A. Research. Letter B. Summary. Letter C. Clichés. Or letter D. Thesis Statement. Number 3. It is a question where the conclusions have an opportunity to briefly answer it replacing the study within the context of past research. Letter A. So what? Letter B. How about? Letter C. What to think? Or letter D. What to know? Number 4. It is not only a summary of your points or a restatement of your research problem, but a synthesis of key points. Letter A. Significant of the topic. Letter B. Closure. Letter C, conclusion, or letter D, presenting new ideas. And number 5, it can present these points or might discuss how the impacts of the topic affect a specific outcome. It also helps add emphasis to how you present the importance of your information. Letter A, significance or results of the main points. Letter B, conclude your thoughts. Letter C, state your research topic. Or letter D, first. Do you want to know?